Unit testing is an important part of software development. Even though I hardly show it here on the channel, in professional code almost everything is tested. So let's dive into one of the most popular testing frameworks for C++, which is Catch2. I show how to use Catch2 with the Meson build system to write powerful unit tests and also to write them fast. So why Catch2? I prefer Catch2 because it's super easy to use. It's set up in a few minutes and it offers mostly all the stuff that you need. Probably some very advanced features you need to go to Google test for, but other than that, Catch2 is very, very good and super easy to use. And according to the last year's survey, some around, somewhere around 11% of developers in professional development use it. So it's the second most interesting test framework to look at. And that's why I show you today. Enjoy. So going here on the website of Catch2, it's uh, fairly easy to find. Uh, you can end up here in the GitHub of Catch2 and it's basically everything is there that you need to uh, do your stuff. Um, I will today show how to use the currently still maintained version V2, uh, even though V3 currently is in development. But uh, as soon as this one is out, I will probably make a video from that. Um, but I always prefer somehow to go with a stable version to not run into un uh, unexpected problems. Um, so usually um, so Catch2 is designed to be used with CMake. Uh, recently there was also like the Bazel stuff added and I think in the new one there's even more build files. But I prefer the Meson build system and the Meson build system offers here something which is pretty cool, uh, which are these wrap data database packages. And you can also see it here on the Meson website that there is this Catch2 uh, database. And this is basically a wrapper which uh, includes then Meson support for uh, very popular packages. And Catch2 is very popular and that's also why I have it. So it's very interesting this site here. So the wrap database, if you're using Meson, it's really cool to find all of the database packages and adding support which means that it's fairly simple to integrate it in your project. So what we will do, we will add catch2 as a dependency to our project and then we will let Meson take care of the rest, download it and so on. Um, so yeah, let's go. And that's already it. So at this point in time, Catch2 is successfully downloaded from the GitHub of Catch2 and Meson, um, the Meson files have been patched by the rep database of Meson and Catch2 is now here ready to go and you can now start using it like any other dependency in your code. So the next thing is that we will add a class and we will uh, use here a limiter. So we just um, yeah, add a class which is limiting a, sp a specific integer value, so nothing too fancy. Um, but it should do everything that we can later on test using the test framework. But let's add the class to the meson first and then let's go from there.
Okay, at this point we have implemented everything that is necessary for a class. So we implemented here like a limiter. We have implemented the function which can set the number and retrieve the number. And we have now started adding here the test files. Um, the test files themselves, they require something um, now from catch in order to compile and in order to also provide the main function. Something that is very cool from catch is that they already provide you with a necessary main function if you use the correct define, but you can also find it here on their side under the examples of their test cases, how to actually do it. And for instance, if you go here, you immediately see what you need to include, or you also see that if you want to have, a, uh, yeah, basically anything like sections, like uh, anything that you could do with catch, you will find here. Uh, one thing you need to, of course, use the right branch. Otherwise it can be that probably you don't have uh, the, the correct documentation for the version of catch you're using. Uh, so what we need to do here is we need this catch config main macro and uh, also include catch and then we're able to set up our test cases. But let's see first of whether it compiles. Um, but this basically, this catch config main uh, was missing. The compilation can take a while because it's a single header and single headers always have the problem that compilation time is very, very long. Um, that being said though, I think in catch three or catch two version three, um, they changed the structure to something uh, more uh, split it up and there you can actually pick and choose what headers you want to have compiled. So it should be a little bit faster than the new version. Um, but yeah, let's, let's wait until it's finished compiling. Compilation is ready. And now let's uh, run the test case, which is on the build here, limiter, and then limiter test. And we see, we see it via the command line interface of catch2. All of this, the output here, no tests ran. This is already provided by catch2 because you see I have defined nothing inside here, um, but it's still there. And it also tells me that there are currently no tests, uh, which is no surprise since I didn't implement any test case. Um, but let's go with test cases. So uh, writing a test case is really straightforward um, and it just uses this test case macro. Um, and the test case macro, um, they have a nice documentation on it, um, but this is basically all that you need combined with uh, one thing that is called this requires macro and the requires macro uses your basic check if something is how it should be. Um, so for instance, if you want to compare values, if you want to state expectations to your class, you can use it, uh, you can directly use the requires macro. And the cool thing here is that it will also uh, use all of the operators that you yourself have defined. So if you have, for instance, some equal operators or some plus minus operators and so on, um, everything will be correctly handled. And that make, makes it pretty straightforward to use. Um, and you don't need to remember like uh, all the 20, 30 different test macros to test for equality, inequality or something like that. Um, so this is something that's really cool. Um, and this is also why catch in my opinion is pretty straightforward and easy to use because you really only need to remember these two things and are ready to go. And exactly this is what we will do. We will write a test case for the limiter. Um, might not be complete, but I just want to show how it works. And here we already have the first test case. So I create a limiter with 10 as a limit. Then I set the number five and I would expect that I get the number five back since the limit hasn't been touched. And we can reuse here the command again to build it and then to, um, yeah, to run the test and see what happens. So it has successfully compiled and we also see that all tests are being passed and we have one assertion in one test case 
which is basically this one requires and we have one test case which is currently called limiter. And there are also some very uh, good command line options. So for instance, with minus S, you can actually see what is inside and have a little bit of a more verbose output and see that actually the number here and why it's passing and so on. Uh, so just with minus minus help, you can see all of the command line options that you have available and it's really, really a lot. Um, so you can run tests in random order. You can, can specify if you want, for instance, a report in a specific output, like an XML format or like a test format that you could connect to some CI CD chain. Um, and basically anything that you can uh, that you can think of. Also like benchmarking, like running a test a few thousand times to see how fast it is and so on and so forth. So it's really offering already a lot of functionality out of the box without you needing to do anything. Um, so yeah, this is now a very small test case, but let's extend a little bit on that and try to, uh, and then try to also explain um, different uh, features of Catch2. So something that you always do in unit testing is that you try to test a lot of possible paths in your code and also a lot of different uh, things that might happen and for instance one of the things is that you have positive numbers and negative numbers and usually these test cases have a lot of repetition inside and the repetition is something that is called uh, sometimes a test fixture uh, so a setup and a tear down of the tests so for instance, here this limiter line, as you can see here, as I have marked it, it is the same line in all of the code, which usually makes test code quite big because there is a lot of boilerplate. So just imagine this is not now a limiter that you want to set up at this point, but maybe something like a TCP IP stack. So if you set this one up, you probably need more than a single line of code. And this is why fixtures are really great. However, in most of the testing frameworks, fixtures are really something yeah, uh, ugly to handle because they're in separate functions and so on. But uh, Catch2 here is special because they offer something called sections. So you can basically write the code as you usually would, it, would write it, and then you can use so-called sections. And those sections basically are only executed once. So one uh, section is run with this fixture. And this is something that is really cool because you can basically reuse this line here. So I can say, okay, limit up uh, is 10 and it will always be 10. And now I can basically put two of the test cases inside one function with different sections. And I could even give the sections names if I only want to run a single section. And this is basically already it. So you basically have here the section and they also have a very good um, documentation about it. So these fixed fixtures or sections. And here you see that they basically also give it names and they say uh, exactly how it works. So this is something that is really cool. Um, and I think it makes your code uh, that much easier to read and also requires less testing code uh, for the same. So for instance, I can see a say positive number and here for instance, negative number. And then you can again build the code and see what actually happens and it will automatically execute all the sections for you. Now it's compiled and you see after compiling it, we actually have a test case which is failing. So it tells me, for instance, here, my limiter number equals 10. This one here is failing in the test uh, line 26. And this is a great possibility to debug your code because you immediately know where it's failing and you immediately know what should be happening because in the test, you basically specify the behavior of your class. You, you specify what you expect. And in this case, my expectation apparently did not uh, or is not implemented in the class. So here, for instance, I created the limiter with limit 10. I think that's correct. I say I set the number 15 
and I would now expect that I get the number 10 back because 15 is above the limit and then it should be limited to 10. So let's have a look at the implementation because something is wrong in the implementation, otherwise this test case would pass. Now if we go back here to the implementation of the limiter, probably something here because it's a very small class, it's also easy to find. Um, inside set number, uh, here we have the input and we see that if limit is below number, and probably this is wrong because um, if the limit is below uh, not the number, because the number is some, the number that's already inside, but below input, then I would say that the number should be the limit, otherwise the number is the input. And here I have found the bug in my class and we need to recompile and actually see that all of the test cases are passing now and let's hope for the best. So it's recompiled and we see here that now all tests have passed and our class is uh, behaving how we specified it in the test case and also meeting our expectations. So by writing unit tests, we can easily find bugs and we can easily test our code and there's basically no excuse not to do it. That's all that I wanted to show you today. So equipped with catch2, there is no excuse anymore to not test your classes. Testing is an important part during development and if you think at the beginning about how you can write the class in a way that it's very easy to test, you usually end up with better code and a better design. Um, keep that in mind when developing your classes and also try to test as much of your classes as possible. Um, yeah, that being said, that's all for today. Uh, start up your machine, download Catch, test your classes and most importantly, enjoy coding.